How's it going everybody? My name's Chipper and welcome back to another video on Escape from Tarkov. So in this video, we're going to be doing a bit of a deep dive into the most optimum settings I have found for solo gameplay within Escape from Tarkov. So first of all, we'll be diving into NVIDIA control panel outside of the game, changing some of the settings there, as well as having a look at some of the game filters and saturation options to maybe change some of the coloring of Escape from Tarkov. Then we'll be loading the game back up, going into the um, game settings as well as graphical settings and doing a bit of deep dive there as well. So I hope you guys find this guide useful and you can get some games as FPS. And I'd love to know if this video helped you out in the comments down below, but let's get started. All right, in order to maximize FPS and escape from Tarkov, you first wanna start with the NVIDIA control panel. Fire that up and then you wanna to go to manage 3D settings. Then you wanna to go to the program settings tab and then add escape from Tarkov.exe. Once you've added that in, you're gonna make the following changes. You wanna turn anti-tropic filtering off, FX AA off, gamma correction you can leave on, anti-acing mode off, transparency off, scrolling down. Then you wanna do the multi-frame, you wanna turn that one off. Power management mode, you wanna prefer maximum performance. Perf preferred refresh rate, highest available. Then down to texture filtering, antistropic sample on, negative LOD allow, quality you want on high performance, and then trillionaire optimization you want on, threaded optimization you want on, triple buffering can remain off, and then vertical sync you want off. We'll talk about more as why you leave vertical sync off. And then you want the virtual reality uh, pre-rendered frame set to one. Apply that and then you want to dive over to the adjust desktop color settings. Now these are the settings that I recommend you play around with if you want a bit of saturation or brightness change within the game as these settings should always be allowed with NVIDIA control panel. However, if you're using um, obviously reshade being banned and in-game filterings from NVIDIA may also be banned or changed down the track. So these settings are the, what I recommend changing to give a bit, of, um, a bit of color to the game if that's what you're after. So I'd be using, uh, first of all, I'd be probably playing around with the gamma, um, but it really can come down to your screen and video settings. Everyone's setup is going to be different, but if you're finding that it's quite dark in certain parts of the map and you can't even see certain things, you want to probably increase the gamma up to about 1.1, maybe 1.2, and see how you find that in game. Another good thing to do to here is that the digital vibrance, this will give you saturation and extra color. This will make the game not feel as uh, dreary. So if you want a bit more color within the game, the trees to be a bit, a bit more lifelike, for example, or the grass, change this up to maybe 65 to 70%. I wouldn't go any more than that, as the game does start to get a bit clowny and it probably kills the immersion of the game quite considerably. So um, I would start off lower and then potentially or around 70 and then work your way down and see where you can find that sweet spot. Now when it comes to NVIDIA game filters, I can't actually show you in game because you can't see the overlay. However, I will leave a link in the description for a recommended game filtering settings that may help you if you're looking for that um, reshade sort of look. Um, it's entirely up to you. You might want to make some changes depending on your loadout and you know, your screen. However, it's a good base starting point that may actually help you out. I personally don't use game filters in game. I just use the NVIDIA control settings that I talked about prior, but it's entirely up to you on what you prefer to use. Okay, so now that you've changed your NVIDIA settings to maximize FPS, we're now gonna cross over in game to the settings and the game tab first. What I want you to have a look at here is if you are running eight gig of RAM at the moment, you definitely wanna have this auto RAM cleaner on. It will maximize that eight gig for EFT rather than it being consumed and then resulting in significant um, jagging and FPS hits once you've been playing the game for one to two hours. Um, this, in my opinion, is worth keeping on even if you have 16 gig or more as well, as it potentially just saves you in case you do reach that cap of your RAM. The other thing that, that you want to do, and this is a must, is use only physical cores, have that selected. What this means is for users that do have hyperthreading or the equivalent with AMD, that it only uses the physical cores of your CPU, and that will significantly improve your FPS overall, so definitely have that one ticked. 
Okay, so now that we've changed our uh, game settings, we're going to flick over to graphics. And the first one we're going to talk about is the screen mode. Always run this in full screen mode if you're able to. You'll definitely notice an FPS boost if you can run in full screen as opposed to borderless. There is also a minor input lag by running borderless. Um, so that's just something to take into consideration. Now, in my opinion, when it comes to texture quality, I highly recommend that you leave this on high um, at first and then change all the other settings first and come back to this as a last resort. The reason is if you do start dropping this from high down to medium or low, you will notice significant degrades in quality in the game. And in my opinion, it really will tarnish the experience um, if you do drop this setting, but you can gain FPS by going on to low. All right, so the next one is the uh, shadow quality. Now, this one's a bit of an interesting one. If you want to be able to see players easier, definitely run on low um, as it will um, affect the draw uh, distance and the uh, amount of shadows that are actually rendered and it will make it easier, especially on maps like Interchange. Um, even the draw range and the shadow quality will do funky things where half the map lights up as if it's daylight inside when it should be dark as all hell. Um, so you, you are disadvantaging yourself by running this higher, in my opinion. But in saying that though, um, you can gain FPS by running this higher. So even high in Ultra, you potentially will see an increase in FPS because it will change from rendering on the CPU on low and then moving it over to the GPU once you start hitting medium or above. So it's up to you, you just need to play around with it. If you're struggling to maintain 60 FPS constantly, I highly recommend buffing this up because you, at the minimum, you really wanna be achieving at least 60 FPS constantly. If you're dipping below 60 FPS, then you really are hindering yourself from engagements. The next one, um, um, LOD quality, I leave this at two. Um, I don't really see much advantage. I know that the FPS starts to drop significantly as you start to rise this, especially when you rise it all the way up to four. But if you leave it at LED, um, LED quality two, you will notice um, that you get the best benefit. But um, I heard that uh, 2.5 isn't such a bad option either. Um, and I think it can help with tree rendering and a few other bits and pieces as well. So um, it's not so bad on 2.5, but I recommend two for maximum FPS. Overall visibility, definitely run this at 400. Um, you'll get, um, in my opinion, the best FPS that you can. If you're gonna increase this, I would only increase it up to a thousand. That should be enough for the most maps and it allows to render in some of the fire objects which normally don't render in. So you will notice after about 200 meters, maybe even shorter on certain maps, there are certain objects that actually don't render and you're shooting at PMCs and players, but they're actually behind cover and you mightn't realize that they are. So, um, and that can also come down to the scope you're using. So, but maximum FPS, definitely 400. Now, when it comes to shadow visibility, lowers as possible. Um, a lot of people like it a little bit higher, maybe 60, 65 for immersion. But if you want FPS, definitely all the way down to the lowest setting. Now, anti-aliasing. Um, when it comes to the setting, there are two ones you should be selecting, either FXAA or TAA. Um, I recommend running it on TAA um, as it does um, improve the quality of the games considerably. It will probably mean about a 10 to 15 FPS loss by running TAA, but the game will look significantly better. But if you do want to run FXAA, you will gain some FPS, but at the sacrifice of uh, more jaggy edges um, in the distance, and the game will not look as sharp as it does with TAA. Um, if you have a beefy machine though, and if you want to, you can potentially run the high option, TAA high, but TAA by itself seems to be enough. Resampling, I don't really feel like this is necessary, so just keep that one off uh, all in the one times. Now HBAO does significantly add detail to the game, but it does come at a frame hit. So if you want the game and your guns and bits and pieces to have that sort of flair about them, to be more polished, definitely increase the setting. Um, this is probably a setting that I reckon people that are trying to do video editing or streaming and stuff like that, and they've got a pretty beefy rig and they want the game to sort of look and be promoted quite well. Um, this is a setting to, in my opinion, to definitely increase. Otherwise, if you're just looking for FPS and the edge when you're playing solo, turn that one off.
SSR, I would highly recommend uh, leaving that one off too. Um, it gives a bit more shadow quality and you know, things like that that I noticed when I turned it on, but and it it was very depending on the map that I saw this on. Um, but it can be a five-ish sort of five to ten sort of FPS hit. It just depends on your rig. Um, I'm running a 1080 Ti with an 8700K overclocked, so my results could differ. And I will be putting up constantly, as you probably see on the, on the left or right side, my specs for my machine, so that you can kind of compare what um, I'm currently running to what you have and what desired results that you're going to get. Antistropic filtering, I actually leave this one off. Now this used to be one I used to run as per texture or on, but ever since TAA came in with the latest patch as the anti-aliasing option, I don't feel like it's necessary. Um, and I'd rather turn that one off and run TAA and then just have the FPS hit there rather than running antistropic filtering. So leave that one off. Um, but if you do find that you get benefit from that one, definitely turn it on. Um, Next one is sharpness. I run it 3.0 because I want to be have. I find that I can't stand the game without as high a sharpness as I can. I find it just makes the game a little bit more crisper and easier to see objects. But that's just me. If you find that that's too bright, it kind of does give the painkiller effect. So if it's too much, definitely dial it down. Um, 0 0.7 to like 1.0 seems to be like a popular number um, that a lot of people switch to, but I run it at full ball. So play around with that one. That is definitely um, up to the individual and I don't think that really affects FPS all that much. Um, not from what I noticed anyway. Lobby FPS and game FPS definitely at high, high as high as you can go, and all the bottom options are unticked, um, especially grass. Grass shadows will tank your FPS severely. Now, coming back up to the top, the V-Sync. Now, we turned the V-Sync off in NVIDIA, so there's a few things to highlight with this one. One, if you've got a G-Sync monitor, turning it off in NVIDIA control panel will probably disable your G-Sync mode. Uh, two, which so that might be a big one as to why, if you want to actually turn that one off or not. Two, um, if you turn, if you leave it off, you will be having the default um, FPS limiters, so 120 in game. But if you do untick it and save, you'll notice straight away in the top right hand corner, my FPS has skyrocketed from the 60 to uncapped FPS. The only reason why I'd probably be hesitant for certain um, players to use this is just make sure you're one in an air conditioned room, two you've got significant fanning um, fans in your case, um, as your video card is now going to be taxed at 100% every time that you're in the menu and it will throttle cards. It takes about between three to five minutes for certain NVIDIA cards to be throttled because they're running at 100%. They will skyrocket to 80 degrees. You will also have significant heat increase in your case. So be mindful of this. This is a big one that no one talks about. Everyone says, oh, if you want uncapped FPS, untick it. But I tell you what, make sure you've got some software running to adjust your um, GPU fan curves and even your PC fan curves to really support that video card because the last thing I want is people unticking this, leaving the game running in the menu and then coming back and their video card has been running at 100% and cooking itself. Um, so it's a bit of a quality of life. Um, video cards aren't cheap these days. Um, I've got a 1080 Ti and I want as much life as I can out of it. So. Uh, definitely uh, in my opinion if you want the extra FPS run it but if you're still holding above 100 FPS that's still pretty damn good and that's a wrap for escape from Tarkov settings as of patch 12.2 now if you did get some considerable gains from watching this video please post it in the comments as well as the rig that you're using as it could significantly help out another player who's got a similar rig to you and is looking to see what FPS they're getting and comparing it to their own. And also too, if you notice a setting that I haven't talked about in this video that could potentially improve FPS or has some visual aid within the game, please share it down below. Um, and then that way um, the community or myself can actually test it out and then we can always make a slight update video down the track. But anyway guys, um, if you found this video informative, please smash that like button. And also too, I really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel as I'm really trying to push for a thousand subs um, in 2020 to activate a new goal which is potentially streaming down the track. So your support there would be much appreciated and until next time, I'll see you back out there.